Hello there, it's Bianca from The Closet Historian and today I wanted to talk about vintage hairstyling and give you guys some tips and talk about the tools of the trade. Something to remember is that I am speaking from my own experience, I'm not a professional hairdresser or anything like that, I have no real training other than years of practice, and that my own hair is quite thick, holds curl really well, and has a bit of a natural wave. So those are the, that's where the basis where I'm coming from and where these tools and tips have come in handy for me. So when you first start doing vintage hairstyling, it can be quite the learning curve because modern styles, although they use similar techniques in many ways, there are a lot of techniques that have really faded out of style and fashion that nobody uses anymore that were big in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Most of you know that in the early parts of the 20th century, no one wore their hair straight, really. It was maybe if you had like a Louise Brooks sort of straight bob in the 20s, but other than that, everyone curled their hair, whether that was with pin curls, foam rollers, um, permanent sets or perms were a big thing as well to get that wave pattern to stay. So let me go through some of the basic tools I think are best for vintage hairstyling. So as far as curling irons, I'm going to recommend you go down in size. This is actually a half inch curling iron. I probably use a half inch, a three quarter, and a one inch curling iron whenever I'm doing my vintage hairstyles. Anything bigger than that, the, hair, the curl is really going to be too loose unless you're going for like a really loose wave Veronica Lake kind of look. And the longer your hair is, I feel like the more limited you are in your vintage styling, which is odd. I mean, obviously you can do pretty great updos and poodles and things, but as far as like sculpting hairstyles, I feel like the longer your hair is, the harder it is to get 30s and 40s looks sometimes. So I really recommend cutting your hair shorter. That's a big tip and one that not a lot of people want to hear. But the shorter uh, kind of shoulder length to chin length bobs or a layered midi kind of style haircut is really going to do you a lot of favors in making your vintage hairstyles come out like you see in a photo or like you see in old setting pattern books because they had a vintage haircut to start with. So if you're starting with a modern haircut, using vintage techniques, it's still not going to look very vintage in the end just because things won't fall into place the same way on a modern haircut as they would on a vintage haircut. But I recommend smaller curling irons. This one's a half inch from Hot Tools. I really like Hot Tools curling irons. Hashtag not spawn. Um, I like that you can set the heat on these and that they come in various different styles uh, or sizes rather. These are really good for going through and setting your hair in a pin curl pattern even though you're using a heat set curling iron set. I take everything, every curl that I take off the curling iron, I roll it back up and pin it back into place like a pin curl. That way my hair can cool in the setting pattern and it just makes the curls keep the pattern that you're putting in as you go. The biggest difference between curling your hair like for a modern style and curling your hair for vintage styling is you want to take into account which way the curls are facing. Are they curling down? Are you curling forward, backwards? Are you on base, off base? All those kind of things that are sort of new to someone entering to vintage style. You can achieve a vintage look with a curling iron. You're just gonna have to be a lot more particular about each section that you're curling as opposed to just curling willy-nilly like you would with modern hairstyles. And of course there are other ways to curl your hair besides a curling iron, especially if you want to avoid heat styling. And one of those ways is with foam rollers, of course. That's what I've got in my hair today. And I think the biggest thing that I've had to learn with foam rollers is to really wrap your hair around them like flat in a more of like a ribbon-ish way. I used to get really pinched rollers like that and I would really wrap the hair too tightly and that just results in really, really tiny curls that are frizzy and they don't lay nicely when you're done and even in a brush out you can't really tame them. So the more flat and the more you can keep your foam roller in its natural little cylinder shape and the more ribbon like you can get your sections around it the better. Again you are going to want to section your hair and maybe look at old vintage setting patterns or wave patterns so you can get the style in the end that you're looking for. If you're going to want something more like a page boy you're going to want to roll everything down and under. If you're going for like 60s volume you might want to roll everything really high up off the head so you can get that volume. And if you're doing like a 1930s style, for example, you wouldn't want your curls sitting up here on the top of the head. You would want to only roll the ends and keep them kind of down. That way you could have the smooth top to your hairstyle in the end. So foam rollers are really great, of course. I mean, you have to, I have to sleep on them at least. Today I'm trying to set it in the morning and take them out in the evening. So we'll see if it dries enough. For me, because I have thick hair, I do not get my hair totally wet and I can't do foam rollers right out of the shower. I have to wait till my hair is pretty much 100%, 90% dry. And then I just wet the very, very ends so I can loop them in. Because for me, I could probably set my hair 100% dry on a foam roller and a couple hours later it would take the curl just because I have hair that curls really easily. But for some other people, maybe you have to have soaking wet hair going in with these. So that's another tip with foam rollers. If your hair is taking the curl too much, if it's just too curly and brushing it out takes too long, 
try setting it on your hair when it's more dry. Um, the wetter your hair is, obviously, the more it's malleable to get into that kind of curl shape. And maybe it's just taking the curl too, too well. And I've definitely had that be a problem for me in the past. So just try setting it a little bit drier. So another option similar to foam rollers is gonna be pillow rollers. And those have the same sort of foam inside with a piece of stiff wire and then a tube of fabric covering the whole thing. And those you just wrap your hair around the same way and then you twist the wires to close it. And it, it's a little bit less structured because you're twisting those wires, it curves the curl a little bit, but it still works really well to curl your hair if that's something you like and you find it more comfortable than the regular foam rollers to sleep on, which I know I do. I sometimes replace in my foam roller sets this side with pillow rollers, that way I can sleep on it more comfortably. But those work as well and that's another good option with no for no heat styling. And then of course, perhaps the most authentic way to get 1930s and 40s curl into your hair is with pin curls. And you're gonna need these pin curl clips. They look like, they're like these little short metal aluminum clips. And so I like having both of these on hand. They're super cheap at Sally Beauty Supply to get these little aluminum clips. I like these and then of course I like the bigger duckbill clips as well, which is good for holding in like a big roll. You can put that in there while you're waiting for a cool, uh, curl to cool or just for sectioning. I use these all the time. These are super useful to have and again, super cheap at Sally's. That's the nice thing about vintage hair styling is it's not really a huge barrier to entry as far as cost because foam rollers, clips like this, uh, I'd say the most expensive item you could come across would be the curling irons, which are again only like $27, $30 for a hot tools curling iron. But these kind of things are only like three or $4 to get a set of them at Sally Beauty Supply. And you can follow diagrams that you can find online really easily from old vintage hair styling books from the 30s, 40s, and 50s to get particular setting patterns so your hair comes out a certain way when you are doing pin curls. And it's probably a really good option for people with thinner hair. I can't really use pin curls just because my hair is so thick it will never dry. Um, even if I start with relatively um, dry hair, it just never dries all the way when I'm doing these flat pin curls against my head. And you can do standing pin curls, but then I can't really sleep on them. So for me, pin curls aren't really the way to go. Um, the traditional pin curling. I do pin curl my hot set hair. So when I heat set my hair, I take each curl off the curling iron and pin them around my head. You can see that in one of my tutorials that I'll put in a card above, but pin curl clips. You gotta have them. Available at Sally's, not Spawn. Another kind of cheap aluminum clip you can find at Sally Beauty Supply are gonna be wave clips, which look sort of like this, which is a funny, they've got a like curved shape so they can sit along your head and then they have little teeth inside here. And you can just use those to pinch along your finger waves or if you start getting a wave in your set, you can use these to clip the ridges to keep those in. It's really good to spray your hair with a tiny bit of um, hairspray and just so it's a little bit tiny bit wet and then clip these on and then take them out when you're all done setting your hair and you can get that really nice sharp ridge into your waves. So wave clips are again super useful and very cheap at Sally Beauty Supply so definitely pick up some of these. And then of course you're just going to want some regular hair clips, larger hair clips, probably larger than this one, um, to hold your hair into the sections while you're doing your hair. You're gonna want a rat tail comb, that way you can just use this end to separate sections or define your part, super useful. And then the small tines are good for getting out little tangles from each section before you wrap it around a foam roller or even before you curl it with a curling iron. And when it comes to brushing your style out, um, we call it a brush out when you take out your set and you're brushing it over and over and over again. They call it a brush out. It's like a separate task and it takes a while sometimes, depending on how well your curl has taken. The, le the looser your curl, the less you have to brush it. The more curl you have in there, the more you might have to brush it before it starts looking like you want. There's definitely a mid stage where you would look sort of like clown hair and it's very scary, but you just gotta, gotta keep brushing. And for that, I recommend a Denman styling brush. This is recommended by every vintage stylist on the internet and there's a reason why I bought it because you know they said it was a good tool and I agree with them. So grab yourself a Denman styling brush and then it will definitely help with your vintage styling. Now when it comes to products I haven't really mentioned anything and that's because I find with products everyone's hair is so different and whether you have thin hair or thick hair or naturally curly hair or naturally straight hair I mean, it's just so varied on what products you might need to get a particular look. A big one is Lotta Body Setting Lotion. That's what a lot of people use before um, for setting their hair. And I use it sometimes, but very, very diluted. I'm talking in a spray bottle full of water, I will put 
like one eighth of it or less will be a lot of body steady lotion that's how much i dilute that down just because it can get crispy on your curls very quickly so it definitely works but it's not for everyone and i know i'm not sure if it's cruelty free so i don't know if i would buy another bottle without checking on that but things like hairspray and mousse and all kinds of things there's many many options out there and you just have to work find what works best for your hair type so i'm not really recommending any product in this video and that's why just because i think hair types are so different that it's not even worth trying to tell you what I use because I use very, very little product in my hair because it takes curl really well, so I don't really have to put a mousse or setting lotion in it, so I don't really have anything to recommend to you. And then as far as styling your hair goes, and then also just general purpose, I found the holy grail of bobby pin. These ones are from Sally Beauty Supply. They're just Sally's Meta Grip Premium Bobby Pins. Kind of look like this they come in a little octagonal container like this and i mean i bought this three or four years ago and as often as we all lose bobby pins and find them all over the house i still have some left in here so that's great these are just stronger bobby pins than i have ever used before they keep their shape they don't sort of bend out or twist or lose their grip they're really great bobby pins so i totally recommend picking up the sally beauty supply bobby pins don't just grab the ones from the grocery store or from target it's just gonna frustrate you in the end and these ones are just so much so worth getting you would think that a different bobby pin how different can possibly a bobby pin be but these ones kind of changed my hairstyling game when i got them because it was like i could secure a victory roll and it would just stay and i would only need a few and not 20. so definitely pick up these bobby pins another kind of pin you might want to pick up is just a traditional hairpin just like this style just for putting in fine pieces of hair that maybe fall out of your style as you're working for me i actually use them when i have my net on like this to secure the net because it'll stick right through and that's another thing too if you're using like a hair net to keep your curls in a windy day or something like that you can put these ones through there they're really good for updos so it's just good to have both styles of pin available while you're styling and then as far as side combs which are pretty popular for vintage styles because you can either do like a french twist and use these guys or pin up one side or pull back one side when you're doing vintage hair styling i recommend grip tooth combs that's what this is although one time is broken away from use here i think my mom got them for me from christmas one year and they were on amazon when she picked them up and i haven't ever seen them actually live in a store oddly enough but um they are the best side combs they the teeth actually the tines touch and it makes all the difference as far as actually holding your hair especially someone like me who has thicker hair these work super well and i think just having something that works and how actually holds the hair like these or like the better bobby pins it's not like they, they don't cost that much more like at all but they just solve their frustration so much so the less frustrated you get when you're doing your hair the better for me i tend to get frustrated easily when doing my hair so if i can just have something that works the first time every time i'm all about it so hopefully some of these tips and tools are useful to you guys i really wanted to share basically what my toolkit was like before i did any more hair tutorials that way i could just jump into the styling next time and you guys would know kind of tools I was talking about and what I use. I know there's a lot of vintage hairstyling tutorials here on YouTube and they've always been a real help to me in learning how to do vintage hair and everyone seems to do things a little bit differently and of course everyone has a different hair type so I wanted to make sure I added my two cents in in case it could help anyone who was struggling with vintage styling. So thank you all for watching today and I'll see you again next time.